Unit 4. Analysis There was a ravine in the forest, and Charlie had made his way into it through an early morning fog. All the ravine looked the same in the daylight. The high walls, the masses of weeds and wild berry bushes, the trees. He had wandered around for a while, following the little paths made by dirt washed down from the hillside. But finally, he sat down on a log and stared straight ahead without seeing. There was a dullness about him now. He had had so many scares, heard so many terrifying noises, got startled by so many shadows, been hurt so often that all his senses were worn to a flat hopelessness. He would just sit here forever. It was not the first time Charlie had been lost, but never before had there been this finality. Practice 1. Anne and Marco's comfortable home immediately becomes a crime scene. Anne is sitting on the sofa in the living room. Someone has placed a blanket around her shoulders, but she's still trembling. Police cars are parked on the street outside the house, their red lights flashing, pulsing through the front window and circling the pale walls. Anne sits immobile on the sofa and stares ahead as if hypnotized by them. Marco, his voice breaking, has given the police a quick description of the baby. Six months old, blonde, blue eyes, about 16 pounds, wearing a disposable diaper and a plain, pale pink onesie. The house is swarming with uniformed police officers. They fan out and methodically begin to search the house, but the baby is gone. 2. My daughter Sandra had a friend in sixth grade that would never look directly at me. We'll call her Emma. Emma wasn't shy, but she gave me the feeling she was hiding something. When I served an after-school snack in the kitchen, she wanted to eat upstairs. If I suggested the girls play outside where I could see them, she encouraged Sandra to stay in the rec room. She seldom smiled or said please or thank you. One day, I found a purse in the street by our house. Opening it up to find the owner's identification, I saw that it belonged to Emma's mom. The purse also contained $600 cash. Naturally, I called Emma's mom, who picked up the purse without even saying thank you. It confirmed my feelings that Sandra's relationship with Emma needed to be monitored. 3. No, this is only the eye of the storm. It is the calm part of the storm, and it could start getting bad again any minute. Just as Grandpa said that, the wind picked up and I looked out at the ocean. The biggest wave I had ever seen in my life was headed toward our ship. I was frightened. I didn't make a move toward the stairway, but just stood there looking at the wave. I watched the big, dark wave as if it were in slow motion until lightning flashed and woke me from my daze. The wave hit the boat with an amazing force, knocking me off my feet. I reached for something to grab, but there was nothing. I soon realized that I was in the ocean and the waves were all around me. I saw something floating in the water next to me and grabbed it and held on for my life.